Hello guys, welcome back to SandVFX and today we are back with part 2 of CoCam modeling and rendering tutorial so in the last part we modeled the coke can here is the final model and today we're gonna texture it and render it okay so before texturing it the first thing we're gonna do is create these water droplets so let's go ahead and open up our scene I have already done that and let me press the 6 key to turn on the particle flow particle view or you can also do that by going to down to particle system create a pf source okay and click on particle view okay now onto the particle view we're gonna make some adjustments first of all let me go to birth and set my image stop at zero and i want uh, the amount to be something like 800 okay for now i'll set that 800 and we'll look at later on and if that's not good we'll change that okay so instead of position I can I'm gonna change this to position object I'm sorry I just changed the speed but that is okay because we don't need speed either so let's go to position object and add in my coke can okay so if you watched my modeling part then you might have noticed that I model these separate pieces so I just need these middle parts to have these water droplets so that's why I modeled it separately if you have modeled them uh, in a single piece then you can just extract just this middle part so that you can just have the particles in this middle part now you can already already see that our coke can is surrounded by our particles okay so I won't be needing the speed and the rotation okay in shape I'm gonna go to 3d and down to sphere 80 sides so that we have we'll get nice and round sphere okay now let me go down to display and change it from takes to geometry now you'll see we have some spheres or let's say bubbles around our coke can okay we need to make a little more adjustments so let's get back to our particle view and let me go to pf source and let me go up here and set my viewport percent to 100 percent so that i see all the particles in my viewport okay and i think the particle amount is quite good so let's uh, again go to shape and let me turn on scale percent and then I'm gonna set my scale down a bit and I'm gonna increase up some variations okay that way I get some random water droplets and I think I need to reduce the size okay that looks good let me turn off the wireform by pressing pressing the F4 key okay uh, that looks good I think the particle amount is a little too much so let me reduce it to something like 700 okay that will be good okay if you want to make some adjustments you can do that and also instead of the simple sphere shape you can create your own custom shape like adding some noise to your sphere and modifying it and you can use that modified object as a geometry for our particles okay but we're going to use this simple sphere for now it will act pretty good for our tutorial here okay once that is done the next part is texturing or adding shader to our model okay so first of all let me just move this up model up right at the origin okay that's good maybe like this okay and then I'm gonna go down to V-Ray and create a V-Ray plane okay if you don't know about V-Ray plane then it is an infinite plane uh, you can you just create this simple icon and then while rendering you get an infinite plane and this one's really handy okay now let us texture our can first okay let me turn on wireframe again by pressing the F4 key now let me open up my material editor and in the first lot let me change it to a V-Ray material so click this standard button right there and go down to V-Ray Advance and V-Ray Material okay and I'm gonna browse uh, texture let me go to bitmap okay and let me browse to my folder D sand VFX okay toots coke can and texture okay this one's here okay once I've loaded up my texture I'm gonna apply it to my can and let me hit this button assign material to selection and also turn on associated materials on viewport so that we can see the texture 
right in our viewport but you can see that it's just plain red so we need to UV map our object okay so select this object right there go to modify tab and add in a UVW map modifier okay now you can see the coca-cola textures right there but still we need to make some more adjustments so let me go to cylinder that's good and I'm gonna go down to alignment and maybe okay it's on X and fit okay now you can see the texture is perfectly fit okay and that's good okay we need to make some adjustments with our shader as well so let me again go back to the default one and I need some reflections as well okay something like that and also I'm gonna just duplicate this map okay this M button right here it is our texture map which we just loaded the coke texture so I can just drag that and copy it to another any of the slots so I'm gonna drag it to our reflection slot okay so that I have a reflection map as a bitmap this coca-cola bitmap image so I'm gonna set it as an instance and okay and let me go to reflection glossiness maybe 0 0.7 because we don't want too much of reflection into our middle part okay now that we're done with this part then we're gonna create this uh, metal or chrome material for a top and the bottom part so let's go to another slot and go to standard down to V-Ray and V-Ray material as before and then I'm gonna set my diffuse color to black or maybe white doesn't matter and reflection full white and I'm gonna set a reflection glossiness to 0 0.9 okay and let's get down to refraction oh, sorry we won't be needing any refractions since this is our chrome material so just a simple material we can just apply this okay to this top part okay sign and also for the bottom part sign that's good now that we're done for the shaders for our cookbook cook can then we're gonna apply a shader for our water droplets so let's create another new material VA material and for the diffuse I'm gonna set it to black and reflection completely white with a glossiness of maybe 0 0.95 and for nail reflection okay let's get down to refraction and also set it as a complete refraction refraction because the water is completely transparent and I'm gonna set a IR to 1.3 and a glossiness to maybe 0 0.95 okay that'll be good so let's click this background button and see how it looks like okay I think um, I'll increase our reflection glossiness maybe to 0 0.8 okay okay that's good now in order to apply it to our particles let me go to the particle view again so let me uh, click this PF source or go to particle view or you can also hit the six key on your keyboard okay and then I'm gonna add in a operator called material static and then I'm gonna drag up my shader onto this non slot right here so drag it and drop it on the non slot and instance okay now let's go ahead and do a quick test render let me hit render and see okay we're getting a cool water effect along with our can that looks pretty good okay we still have a lot of things to work on so first of all let us apply a material for our video plane as well so that's gonna be a pure white material so again let me go to VRA material and set it to pure white okay if you want you can add in some refraction as, re, sorry reflection as well and set the reflection glossiness 0 0.8 that will be good you can increase the subdivision a little bit 10 okay and assign it to the VRA plane you can also assign a material by dragging it or hitting this button assign material to selection okay now now that we're done we need to add in a light to our scene so let me go to create go to light down to V-Ray and I'm gonna create a V-Ray light okay let me drag out 
and let me go to modify tab to the type I'm gonna set it to as a dome okay and let's get down here I'm gonna increase the resolution to something like uh, 1024 and we'll definitely use a texture we're gonna use our HDR map as our texture so let's go to material again and go to a new slot click this get material button right here and go down to V-Ray HDRI okay V-Ray HDRI okay now I need to browse, browse my HDRI map so click this browse button here and here is the Chrome HDRI map I'm gonna use okay and let me set it to spherical okay so let me drag and drop it to my texture slot here and as an instance okay so I need to set up increase the radius of my dome light so let me increase the target radius first okay, so maybe something like that and emit radius a little more okay, let me set it to the middle something like that okay now let me go up here in the mat sorry multiplier I'm gonna reduce it down to maybe 15 that will be good okay now let's go ahead and do another quick test render and let's see how it looks okay it's already started to look good but still not fine okay but it looks uh, really blown out right now okay we need to fix that and we'll do that cancel it let me go to rendering and exposure control and from down here to exposure control I'm gonna set it to our view exposure control and then mode photographic down to white balance preset and set it to neutral and I'm gonna set my shutter speed to 150 and down to ISO 150 okay I just punch in some numbers and if that does not work we'll again come back and try it out and change the settings and do some more test renders okay so let me again hit render and let's have a look okay now we can see it much better it's not blown out like it was before okay so let me cancel it and let me go to render setup now and from here I'm gonna go to indirect illumination tab and turn on global illumination and let's go down to erode its map and let me set it to low for now okay let me go to V-Ray in frame buffer enable built-in frame buffer and let's get down to color mapping and set my gamma to 2.2 okay and let's do another test render okay the render is gonna take some time okay it's done and we got our really good looking color can rendered using V-Ray so <clears throat> let me get back once again and select my light and go down here to multiplier maybe set it to something like 10 I don't want it to be too much okay that would be good again let me go to material and go to water droplets down here and reflection I'm gonna set the glossiness to 0 0.9 okay I don't want too much of um, glossiness or let's say uh, I don't want my reflection to be dim or blurry uh, anything more if we can see here let's say something like that glossiness I'm gonna set it to 0 0.75 okay and then once that you're done you can go to render setup you can increase the output size okay and you can turn on digital enhancement also if you want some ambient occlusion you can turn on that and for the irradiance map preset you can set it to a uh, high or very high okay like that and then you can hit render okay here is our final render and if I was given this work as a product rendering or a project then I would play a little more with some render settings and try to achieve the final and better quality result but it looks really good it can work a little more with the shader um, but it looks good for 
the tutorial sake okay so I hope you guys enjoyed this two-part tutorial and we'll see you guys soon in some more exciting tutorials so don't forget to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel also check out our Facebook page we get update about everything on our pages about new tutorials and many more also please help us by sharing our videos and sharing our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel so that we can grow and we can keep continuing with a lot more great free tutorial so thank you guys for watching see you next time